Hello and welcome to The Wedding Files. I'm Tracy and I'm here to help you navigate through the mysteries of planning your wedding. So the number one question I'm asked by couples is how much alcohol should we buy for our wedding? This can be a very tricky calculation, but I'm here to simplify it for you. So let's count it out and see if you really need 99 bottles of beer. So let me first start by saying, if you don't want alcohol at your wedding, it's totally okay. You don't have to do anything you don't feel comfortable with. However, this episode is not about that. Secondly, having liquor like vodka, rum, and tequila brings bigger challenges. If you have liquor, you need more sodas and mixers and sometimes garnishes. Not to mention that some venues don't allow liquor at all. But this episode is not about that either. This episode is about beer, wine, and champagne that you are providing to the venue to be served as an open bar. Doing this is the most cost-effective way to have alcohol and easiest to calculate for your reception. Below is a link to the Excel sheet that you can use to calculate for you. Just enter the information you know in yellow squares and you'll have your totals. But let me explain how it works so you can totally understand and be able to use this information to negotiate venue package deals and prepare for the costs ahead. So pull it up and let's talk about it together. So first things first, you need to check with your venue and any local alcohol laws to make sure that you know what is allowed to be served and that you have a licensed bartender to serve it. So I'm gonna to be totally honest here, no matter what the drinking age is, there will be a lot of underage drinking. A bridesmaid looks old enough because she's all dressed up and the bartender doesn't realize that she's too young. Or a groomsman will go get six beers for his friends and some are not of age either. It happens all the time and can be very dangerous. So like I said, in case 004, the kiss list, designate a party mom or dad. This person should remain sober and can keep an eye on what is being served and to whom. To help with this and prevent bad behavior, some venues may require a security guard or off-duty police officer, so be aware that there will be charges for that also. And in case you do decide to have liquor, remember, a fun game of who can drink five shots in a row can lead to a little bit of drama. Remember, you want everyone to be present for your wedding, not getting wasted in the corner. Now let's talk about the variables for our equation, starting with beer. You have a bazillion choices on what to get, and you can get it in cans and bottles and kegs or a combination of all three. Remember that with a keg, and after you pay the deposit, you will need to pick it up along with a tap, a barrel, and get ice, and take it all back the next day. And if there's any leftover, it goes to waste, so you wanna be sure that you get the right size. If you choose to do bottles and cans, they can be served in glasses and still have an upscale touch. And anything left over can just go into someone's beer fridge. On the flavors of beer in bottles and cans, don't go over five different types, but choose at least three. Variety packs make it difficult for the bartenders to group the flavors together to find them later, and it never fails that the guest favorite will run out first. In the equation, I'll show you how much you need so you will be able to price out what's best for you. Cakes don't always mean cheaper, especially if it's a specialty beer. So weigh out your options early to figure out what's best for you. For wine, for the basic wedding where you're bringing the wine, choose at least one red and one white flavor. They say that reds are best served with red meat and whites for chicken or fish. But to be honest, unless your guests are true wine connoisseurs, they're gonna drink whatever you put in front of them. But to make it easy on you, first, what's the weather and time of day? More reds get drunk when it's cold and at night, and whites get drunk more when it's hot or during the day. That's very basic, but this shouldn't be hard, right? Second, what do you like? I love Middle Sister Sweet and Sassy Moscato. This is a very sweet white wine. I know that most of my friends and family like this as well, so this would be my white wine choice for my reception, and I would have more of this than red. But since this is super sweet, I would want something to kind of balance it out. 
kind of like a Merlot. It still goes with everything and it's an easy red to drink, but it's not sweet like a Moscato. If you aren't sure what kind to get, get a couple from the store to try out or get feedback from guests you know who drink wine to help choose. Just remember, you don't want to spend a fortune on expensive wines. Most of your guests won't be able to tell the difference. Go with basic wines that you could get at the grocery store or wine store. Champagne. So I'm going to tell you like it is. Champagne is a novelty. Many couples come to me and say, my mom says we have to have champagne for the toast. I usually ask them back, do you like champagne? And most of the time the answer is, not really. Then why do you want it? In all the weddings that I've been a part of where there has been champagne for the toast, it's the number one wasted thing at your wedding. I've passed out glasses, watched everyone raise the glass for the cheers, but put it back down and drank their beer. Or they take an obligatory sip, but put it back down never to touch it again. Then after, when we're cleaning up, we need a bucket to pour all the leftover champagne into. So if you want a champagne toast and don't like champagne, choose sparkling cider, sparkling grape, or a light sparkling wine. Or you can always let the guests drink what they have. Have the DJ make an announcement like, toasts are coming up, so be sure to head to the bar to get a drink to toast with, or something like that. However, it's important for you to have champagne then don't get a lot or have a couple bottles behind the bar just in case. So now that we've talked about the variables, let's talk about a couple terms. The term drinks means when a person goes to the bar and gets a drink, no matter what size it is. The term ounces is how we measure everything. You want to know how many ounces you will need versus how many bottles of beer or wine. Beer, wine, and champagne comes in all different sizes and shapes. Miller Lite's a 12 ounce. Red's Wicked Black Cherry is a 10 ounce. Bottles of wine come in the 750 milliliters or bigger or smaller. There are black boxes that say it's the same as four 750 milliliter bottles. So knowing how much you need in total and dividing out the size will help you calculate exactly how much you need without wasting anything. So now that we know what we are going to calculate, let's figure it out. Start with how many guests you will have that will be drinking alcohol. Let's say 100 people to make it easy. Now how many hours will the reception be? Most receptions are around four hours, but you'll need to know exactly how long you have. On average, each drinking guest will have one drink per hour. Note that I said on average. You will have some that drink more, you'll have some that drinks less. So you know your guests better than me, so use your best judgment. If you feel that all your guests will for sure drink more, then add a case of beer or wine extra. So let's say we have 100 guests drinking for four hours, so that's a total of 400 drinks that will be consumed at your reception. In general, more people drink beer over wine, so we say that 60% of your guests will drink beer and 40% will drink wine. Again, you know your guests better than me, so if they drink more wine than beer, then adjust it the other way. 60% wine, 40% beer. Or adjust however you see fit. Maybe hardly anyone drinks wine, but you want to have it for an option. So go with 80% beer and 20% wine. This is hard to do drunk. So back to calculating and going with the averages. 60% of 400 drinks is 240 drinks of beer, and 40% of 400 drinks is 160 drinks of wine. So we stop here for just a second. Drinks are also how many glasses you will need. Most people go to the bar, get a drink, and then go back to the bar for a new drink and a new glass. So you need enough glasses for how many drinks, then add 15% more as a precaution for spills and breakage. Most of the time, if you rent or buy, generally a beer glass is a 14 ounce glass, but it's a 12 ounce pour. And a wine glass is an 8 ounce glass, and usually at most a 6 ounce pour. But the glasses could be bigger or smaller, so once you know the size of the glass and the pour size, 
Then you can figure how many ounces will be served. So back to calculating again, and we'll assume that everything is gonna be served in a glass. For beer, we know that there will be 240 total beer drinks served, and we are serving them in 14 ounce glass with a 12 ounce pour. So the 12 ounces times 240 drinks is 2,880 ounces of beer to be served. To figure how many cases we need first, Take the amount of ounces in one can or bottle times how many cans or bottles are in a case. Then divide that total into the total ounces. So for example, there's 12 ounces in a typical Miller Lite. There's 24 bottles in a case. So 12 times 24 is 288 ounces per case. Then take that total ounces that we're serving. 2,880 and divide by 288 ounces per case and you'll get 10 cases of Miller Lite beer. For a cake, look at how many total ounces are in the size you want. The amount of ounces in a cake does vary slightly so I'm using the average's amount per cake here. A six cake has 636 ounces and a half cake is 1,968 ounces. So if you want a cake, then take the total number of ounces to be served, again, that 2,880, divided by 636 ounces for a six cake, and that will equal 4.53 cakes of beer. Then round that up or down to whatever works for you. So I would say get four kegs of at least two different flavors and add bottles or cans for backup. This will make sure that you have all the kegs that you need but you'll have some backup in case you run low. And you can break down the calculation if you want to have a combination of cakes and bottles and cans. Now on the wine side, we know there'll be 160 total drinks served. Wine is poured into a glass, so it's not an exact measurement, but it's anywhere from four ounces to six ounces, or about half full. It's easiest to calculate at the most there will be so you don't run out. So we're gonna calculate it six ounces for each glass. In a typical 750 milliliter bottle, there are 25 ounces. If you have that black box of four times 750 milliliters or 25 ounces, then you're looking at a total of 100 ounces in that entire box. So again, Take the total drinks, 160, times the size of the serving in the glass, in our case six ounces, to give you a total of 960 ounces to be served. Then use that total, divided by 25 ounces, gives you 38.4 total bottles of wine, or round to 38 or 39, however it fits you. It sounds like a lot, but remember, you're only getting about four to five glasses of wine out of each bottle. Then if you like white over red, get 25 bottles of white and 13 or 14 bottles of red, or however works best for you. Stupid wine, stupid, stupid wine. Now on to champagne. Again, if you're doing toast and using champagne or any kind of sparkling drink, you won't need much. If you're renting glasses or buying them and using the standard champagne glass, don't fill it more than a half full. That's about three ounces per glass. So again, we have 100 guests for this one-time activity, so one glass each, that is filled with three ounces of champagne to give us a total of 300 ounces. Then a typical bottle of champagne or wine is at 750 milliliters or 25 ounces. So the total of 300 divided by 25 will give you 12 bottles of champagne or wine. If it's champagne, this will be too much, I can almost guarantee it. But again, anything that's left over can always go behind the bar for others to drink later. And a rule of thumb when serving for your servers to know is always ask if someone would like champagne instead of just giving them the champagne. That will cut down on waste and costs as well. So that's how you count the bottles of beer on the wall. 
Remember this is only a general guideline for typical venue type receptions. If you're having a small backyard wedding, then you might not need all of this. Or if you're using a venue that provides all the alcohol, then using this calculation can help when you're negotiating prices. However, your venue has done plenty of receptions to know how much to be used, so trust their judgment as well. But if it's way off and you know that if you went to the store and spent $500 and they're quoting you $1,500 for just that alcohol, then you should ask them where they're getting their figures. Having as much knowledge ahead of time before they start quoting you prices will help you feel not so overwhelmed. And this can help when you're putting your budget together in the beginning. Remember that extra charges such as security, bartender, corkage fees, glass rentals, and tips will add more money to your budget in addition to the alcohol, so be prepared. And lastly, ask the store where you bought the alcohol if they take back any unopened bottles. There's a wine and beer store near me called Total Wine that will allow you to bring it back. So if you're stuck with any unopened red wine that you aren't going to use, take it back and use that money for your honeymoon instead. Remember that you're providing alcohol to your guests as a thank you and to add to that party feel. So it's totally up to you on what to bring and how much. Do what's right for you and your partner, whether it's no alcohol, basic signature cocktails, beer and wine, or a full bar. Always have someone that can help make sure everyone is safe and can get home at the end of the night. And don't drink too much yourself. You don't want to forget what you plan months on and spend a ton of money on. Congratulations and cheers. Hey, can somebody bring me another bottle of wine? Thank you for watching. If you have comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll get to all of them. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and feel free to share and give me a thumbs up. I'll have a lot more videos coming up like how to put together a basic budget and all your options for your wedding cake. So don't miss out. See you soon and remember, I've got your back.